The mission of Globaya is really to enhance our awareness about planet Earth, to strengthen our connection with the global system we're living in. Our belief is that real, long-lasting solutions need to be underpinned by a few core values. One, being inclusive, two, comprehensive, and three, accountable. I have a vision for beautiful beaches with no plastics on them. Imagine healthy waters, waters we can wade through, waters we can swim in, waters we can take our kids to, and waters we can drink from around Aotearoa and the world. I decided I wanted to be a teacher age five, but I have constantly been told, why would you want to do that? You can do so much more. And this infuriates me. You know, and the evidence shows, that teachers are key to improving society and the education for the future generations. The idea that we're working on is how can we get more equitable access uh, to clean energy for folks. I've been here for 15 years. I'm a, an artist, a philanthropist, um, and an entrepreneur, a bit of a serial entrepreneur. I come from San Francisco, uh, and for a few years I spent time basically building and launching small shoebox-sized satellites. Uh, with an understanding that we could use a lot of small satellites in low Earth orbit to better understand the planet. We experimented with social networks and we built a whole series of prototypes. And that prototype became Twitter. I came here to New Zealand because a group here in Wellington in Spiral had invited me. They were building another model for how to innovate. Another model of how to build technology, how to build companies, how to build a future society. My project for the Edmund Hillary Fellowship is called the Sustainable Impact Hub to help uh, New Zealand businesses and organizations get easy access to capital and to find the best contractors to actually do the work because not everyone knows how to install new lighting systems or new heating and cooling systems or how to weatherize their own buildings. My venture in Nelson puts together employees with companies needing part-time contingent workforce. So none of my employees have ever come to me and I've told them they have to work 40 hours. They come to us and tell us what they need to sustain their lives. So the problem that we're addressing here is that 70% of women across the globe have no access to any form of sanitation. They use things like leaves, bark, old cloth and mud. And the women who do have access to sanitation, we experience leaks, stains, discomfort, high expenses, and we produce a ton of non-biodegradable waste. So our solution is a Freedom Cup. We work on a buy one, give one model. So for every cup that we sell to a woman like us who can afford it, we give one for free to a woman who can't afford it in an underprivileged community. My name is Peter, this is Bex, and we are the co-founders of Anteater, a startup which wholesales edible insects. So we do high-end food. We're business to business. We are producers and wholesalers. We sell directly to the best chefs in New Zealand. These are guys who are competing at an international level. So we launched a, a proper circus uh, called Two Bit Circus, and uh, in addition to building tons of crazy things, virtual reality for the Olympics, and even a cloud that rains tequila, uh, uh, we finally said, you know, we've done a hundred events for other people. Let's do our own event, and rather than just a, a party for, for party's sake, uh, uh, let's 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 do something more important. With this position between a small venture fund and a big international organization, we've started to look at how we can turn technology to answer that question, where are the needs the greatest? Three years ago, I started a company called Clearbit. We're a data platform that uh, the companies can use to better understand their own customers. We, we essentially build a building blocks that other companies can use to build upon. I've lived this calling out as an entrepreneur, a founder, an investor, venture capitalist. Generally, my focus has been in investing and building software. Uh, this is more uh, an accident of history. I was born into the time and place where this revolution was taking place and I could have this impact. We are here united, looking very different, but united in a very common mission, and that is helping to end poverty in unity with women. And why New Zealand? I think we just wanted to say that because this is a female and a woman-friendly country, you know, and that um, we, we feel that we could help, we could learn and grow together. The sad reality is that for most people with an intellectual disability, a job will only ever be a dream. And I tell you what, that is just simply not good enough. Here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, one in four people have a disability. Amongst those with a disability, we arguably have some of the most vulnerable people in our communities. My life's mission is to give every single person on the planet a free, practical education. 
We are running the social enterprise, which is called the edutainment. We are the mothers of five all together. And when somebody is asking us what we're doing, we're telling that we are breaking the stereotypes and make the solutions. So how do we achieve this? We do this through the magic and power of play. Our games include the, the sustainable development goals. Every game we play have the contents and interconnectedness of these sustainable development goals. My mission in joining the EHF and what I'd like to help with in this ecosystem is building a bridge between New Zealand and the Southeast Asian ecosystem. New Zealand is a great hub of innovation and I truly believe it's going to get better and better, but currently has a very small end market. We have the very large end markets in Asia, but we don't yet quite have the innovation to solve the problems. I'm looking to enable people from China, those who are in a position to make change, to engage with New Zealand on the crucial issue of sustainable development. And I want to play a role in creating the kind of eye-opening experience that I myself had for those who, are, who come from completely different backgrounds. I feel it's a time for us to rethink really about the globalization, think about you know, what we are extracting and what we are abstracting from all those processes and find a way to give it back to each one of us and to our children and children's. Growing up in South Africa in a deeply divided society, I was always fascinated by the structural drivers behind inequity and poverty and became passionate about addressing those at their root. I wouldn't say just change, because change is just incremental things that you do better. I think the, the thing we've got to really challenge is the transformation. We have a moment in time where we have a new administration who is looking at some fundamental pieces in our architecture which will lock in the ability to transform the way we think about New Zealand and the way we grow.